Okay, Abby, in the shop. Well, I'd known this, I'd have got tarted up. <laughs> Thought it was. Okay, Joe, if you can um, look towards David when you're talking rather than me. Okay, we're ready whenever you're happy. Okay, first of all, if you could just explain why you're in Bournemouth today. Well, um, because uh, almost 30 years ago, I had uh, a very loving relationship with Tony Hancock, which lasted for two years up until his death. I came here 10 years ago as a guest to make a speech. I don't have to do that today, thank God. And uh, I've been asked again, which is lovely. Are you a, a member of uh, the society? Oh, yes. So you enjoy the... Uh, oh, yes. And the of course. What do you think Tony's appeal was to Joe Public? Well, he was lovable. Uh, a lot of comedians nowadays um, could be funny, but they haven't got that warmth that Tony had. Uh, I think everybody cared about what happened to him, you know, in his shows, in the stories. He always wanted him to come out on top. And that, that was his appeal. He was lovable. Did you have a particularly favourite sketch or, or half hour that you really sort of... Oh, God, there were so I'm many. Sure they, indeed, this is the problem, isn't it? Yes. Is the one that uh, perhaps stands out? I like The Missing Page. I loved The Lift because John was in that, my, my late husband. Uh, Twelve Angry Men was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I really wouldn't be able to say which was my favourite. They were all, I think... Well, they've never been topped. No one's ever been better, I don't think, in that particular thing. Moving on slightly, I mean, Mr Merton redid some mm, of them. What, yes. did, what did you feel about those? Well, I think it, he must have had an incredible ego to do that because uh, to try to do something that Tony did to me was just absolutely uh, impossible. It didn't work for me at all. I don't think it worked for many people, mm. unfortunately. Who was Tony's, perhaps, best sidekick? Oh, I think Sid. No question of it. They were perfect. Yeah. Tony used to love to work with actors, with real actors, you know. And Sid was a damn good actor. Mm -hmm. mm. And of course, John was in a lot of them as well. Wasn't mm, he? Yes, yes, John loved him. Did they ever do any other work outside that apart from just the sketches? No, sadly, no. That's a shame. Mm. And. And you've written a book, well, several books, have you? No, just, just one. Just the one, and that's just about one, yes. um, your courtship with Tony, is that Yes, it? yes, it's How called... How did that go down? Did that go down quickly? Uh, women understood it much better than men did. You know, it's really... It's a sort of kiss and tell, but I, I told it 25 years on from when it happened. Um, women can understand that you can love two people at the same time, which I did. I never stopped loving John. But Tony was, um, well, again, lovable and very helpless. And uh, that's it. You can still sense that you, you miss him greatly. Yes, indeed. Is there any way that you could possibly, uh, again, it's an awful thing to say, sum up Tony in, say, a sentence or a couple of words? You know, if you had to describe him to somebody who perhaps... Oh, dear. Well, I thought he was sexy, for starters. He was also the funniest man that I ever met. I mean, he was as funny, if not funnier, off than he was on. So he made me laugh all the time. Even when it was tragic, he was still being funny. He, he just couldn't help it. So that is a great appeal to a woman, humour. And wasn't there one time when he was, was he having breakfast and he was pouring out his cornflakes or something? There's a story there, which I can't quite remember what it was. Is that in my book? Yes. Or it might be in The Jobbing Actor, actually. I'm not too sure. Gosh, I can't remember that one. I can't remember the story either, so we'll <laughs> That's wonderful. Thank you very much for your time. Short You're welcome. Sleep. You're welcome.